What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. What's up, guys? I got to tell you, man, I have spent all day yesterday, pretty much, and a pretty good portion of today just reviewing film on the offensive play of this Philadelphia Eagles team in the first half of that Seattle football game. And I got to tell you, it ain't no wonder why we're losing football games, guys. It's no wonder. Look, Carson's not playing good. I'm not here to make excuses for him. Offensive line is why we're losing. I'm going to tell you straightforward. The offensive line is why we're losing football games. I've watched the film. It is undeniable when you see it on the film. We are getting our asses kicked at the line of scrimmage to an embarrassing level. I would find every damn one of these players. Not one of them was good. Peter sucked. Sumala was horrible. Kelsey got his ass kicked. Brooks, I guess you can make an excuse for because he left the game. But you know what? Viatai, what the hell was that? Dillard, that's a first-round pick. Are you shitting me? Guys, bad. Really bad. I see it now. I kept criticizing this coaching staff about 12-man personnel because it makes us slower. It makes Carson hold the ball longer, all that stuff. Well, now I see why they're doing it. At least in this game, they had to do it because once they had to put Dillard or Viatai or anyone else in the football game, there's holes everywhere. I kept looking and I kept noticing that they were moving Miles Sanders and Ajayi over to the right side. That's because no one on the right side could block. They, they're in 12 man because they need to help out the offensive tackles. Like, it's, it's very apparent on film what's going on, guys, and it's disturbing. It's not good. It's downright pitiful, guys. Today's topic, I'm going to show you. I can't even go through it. Look, I want to show you all something. Just the first half, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, six pages front and back. Full of notes from what I saw. Just the first half. And by the way, the defense, you want to talk about doing your job? Do you know how many possessions this damn offense had in the first damn half of a football game? Seven. Seven. There were literally games where you can only expect to have nine offensive possessions the entire game, and the damn defense gave you seven and one half, and you produced three points. And it wasn't because we didn't move the ball. I understand the frustration on Wentz's part now in the second half. I get why he started forcing things. I'm sorry. Wentz didn't play good. He's got to be way better than he played in Seattle. But this shit's on the offensive line when you see it on the film. It's so apparent on film. All right, I'm going to show you a few of the real big ones, guys. Give it to him again. Pressure in the backfield, trying to spin away. Just to save you guys... The suspense. I'm going to tell you straightforward. Al Woods, Quentin Jefferson, and Jerron Reed in particular absolutely pushed this de this offensive line around all game long, guys. All game long. Al Woods completely controlled them. Puna Ford even got in on it. Kelsey was getting his ass kicked all game long by this defensive front. Dillard was constantly getting pushed back in Carson Wentz's lap. Peters got his ass kicked on a couple of plays. Viatai was just horrible at guard. Suamalu was an embarrassment, guys. And I'm going to show you guys. It's it's just easier if I show you this than if I just tell you, because you're never going to believe me until you see it on film. And you know what? I'm going to give you another look at another play to where it's just, it's quite obvious exactly what happens. He's trying to soften it a little bit. You did. You did. Here's Sanders. Guys, I get that that look might not look that bad on Suamalu. It's not as obvious at first as, as what you saw from Kelsey. Let me slow it down for you because here's what happens. The Eagles designed a pretty damn good running play there. They designed a run to where they got Greg Ward Jr. pulling, they got Goddard pulling, and they got Suamalu pulling to open up a hole. All Suamalu has to do there is seal that block, and it's going to be a large chunk play for the running back. I believe that was Miles Sanders that was in there running. All he's got to do is seal that block. He literally gave such half-ass efforts to seal that block 
on Ziggy Anza that Ziggy Anza just basically bounces right off of him, right into the hole that he's supposed to seal and makes the tackle on Miles Sanders. It's ridiculous when you slow it down and you see it, guys. I'll slow it down for you now. All right, guys. I want you to watch. I'm, I'm pausing this for a second for you so you guys can see this. Watch the effort. When these guys are complaining about the effort of the Philadelphia Eagles during games, when they're saying it looks like they're quitting on people, watch this effort because this is bullshit from a professional. Guys, I would love to tell you that as I kept watching the film, it got better, but it doesn't. It gets worse. I'm going to show you another clip now to where not only does Suomalu get blown off the ball, but watch Dallas Goddard for the second game in a row just roll at the feet of a defender. Come on, man. Have a pair of balls and go into them. Throw with a little bit of snap. Here's a job. Look, guys, hate to break this off in the middle of why you're watching it, but I just want to point something out. Jerron Reed taking Suomalu to school is bad enough. But in reality... If Jay Ajayi has the hole he's supposed to go through open, if Dallas Goddard does what he's supposed to do, then look, Sumalo gets beaten, kind of gets manhandled, but he's at least in position to, to basically seal it off. Dallas Goddard rolling at the feet of defenders has got to be discussed. That kid needs to grow a pair of balls because he's causing us plays. He's scared. Someone needs to go talk to his little scared ass. I.E., and he tries to get outside, and he actually loses yardage here. These plays are just hard to watch. And I'm going to show you that full length again since I kept breaking it up on you so you can see it now that you know what I was looking at. It was there from the play calling. It's just that got it rolled at the feet, which then basically allowed one player to basically get inside and actually take away a hole, which was Quentin Jefferson. And then Jerron Reed took Sol Milo to school, which closed off the other hole. Dude, we've got it. We've got to be better at the offensive line. This is the one area we're actually supposed to be exceptional. And I have not seen it consistently this year. Throw with a little bit of snap. Here's a Jai, and he tries to get outside, and he actually loses. The crazy thing is, guys, is that prior to this game, I thought Suomala was probably our best pulling guard, our best pulling offensive lineman. He had been doing pretty well, I thought, previous to this game. But then I just, like, really paid attention to the offensive line in this game, and I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, it's ridiculous. Like, I'm going to show you another one, another play with Suomalu. Let me just read my notes here, guys, where he is going to be basically, he's going to get punched right in the chest, thrown back. Like, it's it's ridiculous, guys, when you see it. You're, as soon as you see it, guys, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. He just got whipped on the play. Option right now. See, the Eagles can do anything with under a minute to go. They come near side, get it to the other tight end. Did you guys see what clued me in as well? Like, the first time I watched it at live speed, I noticed, like, his, you know, his body goes up. Like, his pads go up. And it looks like his feet leave the ground. I was like, what the hell? So I, I had to slow it down and look. Let me slow it down for you and show you the slow down look of what happens to Suomalo. I mean, it's embarrassing, man. Guys, watch that shoulder punch. Look at them legs come up off the ground. Then he swim moves. I'm like, what's crazy to me is I haven't heard anyone from the media bring this up yet. When you watch the film, it's ugly it is so bad there's another play i want to show you guys to where there was an inside twist guys an inside twist is just a tackle on tackle stunt watch how effective it is at not only blowing up and beating suamalu but kelsey and viatai get crushed on it too i mean it's just it's so ugly third and four four man rush wentz in trouble guys that's a very controversial play because, believe it or not, that's the check down play that most of us looked at when we originally saw it and said, what the hell, Wentz? You got to check that down to Miles Sanders. There's a lot more to that play than what people are seeing. And I'm going to show you why I think why I think Wentz had the hesitation of the check down. I think he's looking at the third and four. Guys, there were three different receivers at three different points where if the offensive line holds up, it's going to be a first down. Look. If you look at that where I put on the screen there, the gradient color, the colorful kind of like orangish, reddish, and yellow one, that's the looper, okay? That's Jerron Reed. He's the looper. The looper is the guy who comes. He's the one who's going to come. Oops, sorry, wrong hand because of the way the camera's fixed. He's the one that comes around, okay? He comes around, all right? The looper is the one that comes around. The offensive line screwed up, guys. It just 
let those guys. I mean, that was a perfect TT stunt, a twist. It's bad, man. The blocking is bad. And I'm going to show you guys, if you watch, so if you watch, you're going to see how they use Miles Sanders to motion. They're checking out the, the defense. Wentz checks it out. But, guys, you got to pay attention to the linebackers because there was a – as much crap as the Seattle linebackers want to talk, they kind of got exposed on that play. I don't buy what they're saying about, oh, we knew all the plays. You know that one, buddy. Your ass is you, – you blew that because you're lucky that, honestly, the, the defensive line got home and saved your ass. Because if the offensive line holds, not only is there – if Wentz comes off of that Miles Sandery just a split second sooner, Ertz is wide open. You miss that split second, and now you can't get that throw. If the line holds up just two seconds longer, a second and a half longer, Greg Ward Jr. is open on the hook route for a first down. I think Wentz held the ball because although that initial route was open because both linebackers flowed to the flats, I don't think he anticipated just the bunch formation causing so much cluster that there was a, a window for a split second for Miles Sanders. I think he saw both linebackers flowing that way and was like, okay, that's going to get picked up. I can get the reception out there, but I don't, I don't know that I'll get the first down. I think that's where the hesitation is. And I'm going to show you split by split what happens there. Cleveland thinks they're starting to get on a little bit of a run. So following that play along, guys, the way it's breaking down, this is pretty easy to see when you're really focusing on it. But obviously they had Miles Sanders up there as a split end, split back. He's basically in a wide, wide positioning, wide receiver positioning. And they're motioning back into the backfield again, right? When I first saw this, it just kind of looks like they're just checking. Are, are they in man coverage? Are they still in a zone? Third and four, it's kind of expected that they're going to be man coverage. What's surprising is, is they tried to line up. As good as some of these line back, Michael Kendricks and Bobby Wagner, some of these guys can be in, in coverage against tight ends and running backs. A little surprising you tried to match up with a linebacker on Miles Sanders. I almost feel like, damn, you shouldn't have motioned him, man. You should have just drew a play out there on a, a seam route or something like that because Miles Sanders, you know, the line can hold, which is the problem. It doesn't. Boy, that's a whew, that's a big problem on their hands. So now it looks like they're going to do that. What the linebacker should do is pass coverage off to the other linebacker. He's not going to do that. They're both going to move with him. Big, big no-no. Third and four, four-man rush. Wentz in trouble. It's hard to put that on Wentz now that you really see the film. Because there is a part of me that says, like, damn, you know, all things considered, had you known your offensive line was going to be so inept that they couldn't even hold a damn block for two seconds, then, yeah, you throw it out there and you, and you take the best shot you got. Best shot you got with the line collapsing on itself because it's a can't block for crap is to just put it out there in Miles Sanders' hands and just give him a chance against the linebacker. But you can see from Wentz's perspective what he's seeing, which is, holy crap, Seattle just blew this coverage. They just had both linebackers go instead of passing it off. Guys, if the line just holds for one second and gives Wentz a chance to come off of that read, Ertz is wide open. That's a first down. Hell, if it holds for a second and a half, two seconds, Greg Ward Jr. has the first. Like, it's the line, guys. It's the line. The line is not holding. And this happens repeatedly in this game to where major things like turnovers and sacks, they're just the line didn't play good enough. This is the line in this game, guys. If the offensive line plays as bad as some of the receivers were with kind of not being where they're supposed to be. As bad as, as Wentz's mechanics were at times, where he's opened his hips too long, he's he's bouncing, you know, he's holding the ball, where it's messing up the toe tap and the delivery. You know what? If the line holds, these problems probably aren't really coming to light, except for in the film with the coaches and the quarterback saying, hey, man, you got to do better. Hey, receivers, you got to do better than this. The line, man, when you dig down deeper and deeper, it's the line. It's the offensive line. And I'm going to, before I jump off here, guys, I'll show you other plays to where, like, yeah, Wentz makes a mistake. Should have never been revealed at the damn line holds. 48 yards on the ground. Ajayi's look good. They'll fake the run here. Wentz hit the ball. Guys, what's frustrating about that protection is 
we were literally in a 13-man personnel jumbo freaking package. And Anza and Jerron Reed just straight pushed the right side of the offensive line right into Carson Wentz and stripped the ball. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they're getting that kind of push against our offensive line. It that this is the kind of stuff that can't happen. It just can't happen. I I don't know how else you can really say it, guys. I mean, this offensive line played like straight garbage. It was bad. And I'll give you another one where Wentz turns the ball over, but you know what? They didn't hold the block long enough because if they held the block long enough, there was a window for a really big play. They'll throw it out of it. Wentz pressure gets rid of it. It's intercepted. Once again, guys, if Suomalu just holds that block for one second longer, I mean, don't get me wrong, there was A and B gap penetration coming through. However, if he just holds that block and doesn't get whipped the way he got whipped, guys, go back and watch it again if you didn't see it. I mean, he got whipped. He holds it one second longer, then Wentz is able to get under that ball, elevate it a little higher, and push it more towards the actual center line. If he does that, it's a huge gainer to Dallas Goddard. Because Dallas Goddard's going to have an opportunity to bring that down. It's It was like that all game, guys. Like I said, seven offensive possessions in one half. Where most teams only get maybe 9 to 11 in a game. We came out with three points. Offensive line, guys. The offensive line killed us in this game. It's disappointing, guys. This is a really disappointing performance by the offensive line. And I'll tell you. I'm uh, definitely looking forward to, sorry about that. I'm definitely looking forward to having Lane Johnson come back, having Brooks come back. Have, you know, we, we just need Alshon back. We need a full arsenal of players again, guys. This crap is not going to cut it what we have out there. It's not going to work. Power desperately needs to get back. I mean, we're in trouble, guys. That's what I got for you. Once again, my name is Stephen Hires. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Look, leave me a like, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, guys. And uh, look, it's painful, but you know what? Like I said, guys, I'm still representing the Eagles. I'm not going to just give up on my team because they're going through a rough back. It's not the way I do things. All right, y'all. E-A-G-L-E-S. If we can fix this crap on the offensive line, I think the offensive production is going to drastically increase. The offensive line killed us in this game.